sorority in uh, Penn State decided to have a Mexican themed party. This is never a controversy on the yeah. Penn State campus. This time it involves a, Penn State a sorority. sorority is folding more than a year after these pictures of members wearing sombreros. Some with fake mustaches and holding offensive signs was posted online. In the last few years, sororities and fraternities actions have been brought into question. Historically, Greek life has been a large part of the community here at Penn State. The first sorority was brought to campus in September of 1926. This sorority, Chi Omega, is one of the largest across the nation and has over 176 active collegiate chapters. Sister and Chi Omega vow to live constantly above snobbery of word or deed, to place scholarship before social obligations and character before appearances, to be in the best sense democratic rather than exclusive and lovable rather than popular, to work earnestly to speak kindly, to act sincerely, to choose thoughtfully that course which occasion and conscious demand, to be womanly always, to be discouraged never, in a word, to be loyal under any and all circumstances to my fraternity and her highest teaching, and to have her welfare ever at heart that she may be a symphony of high purpose and helpfulness, in which there is no discordant note. However, Chi Omega has not always lived up to this high standard for moral conduct. Today, fraternities and sororities are often known for their themed parties, especially during the Halloween season. Members come together and decide on a costume that they will all wear. Two years ago, though, Chi Omega decided to choose Mexican Fiesta as their theme. Members wore sombreros and bright colored clothing and were seen holding signs with racially derogatory statements, such as, We'll mow lawn for weed and beer, and I don't cut grass, I smoke it. This picture was posted on various forms of social media, including Facebook and Tumblr, which caused outrage across campus. It was eventually brought to the attention of Onward State, a popular student-run blog. Students began standing up and speaking out against the derogatory image and demanded direct apologies from Chi Omega to all Latinos. Students not only verbally spoke out against the sorority, but also posted pictures berating Chi Omega across campus for their inappropriate and racist party. In response to the negativity from the public, the governing council of the sorority put the chapter on probation. President Jessica Riccardi made a public apology stating, Our chapter of Chi Omega sincerely apologize for portraying inappropriate and untrue stereotypes. The picture in question does not support any of Chi Omega's values or reflect what the organization aspires to be. After 14 months of probation, the National Chi Omega sorority decided to shut down Penn State's new Gamma chapter and the sorority was disbanded. And when Cesar Sanchez Lopez, Vice President of the Mexican American Student Association, was asked to respond, he said, The Mexican American Student Association is disappointed in the attire chosen by the sorority. It in no way represents our culture. Not only have they chosen to stereotype our culture with serapes and sombreros, but the insinuation about drug usage makes this image more offensive. Our country is plagued by a drug war that has led to the death of an estimated 50,000 people, which is nothing to be joked about. In order to gain a better perspective of Greek life and the controversy mentioned, we decided to interview two current sorority members. So, <laughs> hi, I'm Morgan. I'm Jane. Alpha Chi. <laughs> Alpha Chi <Kai> Omega. <laughs> Probably like insensitivity. Yeah, okay. I feel like, I don't know what I say earlier, like, I think we get stereotyped, but then I think it makes us seem like we're insensitive and that uh, I guess we feel like we're above other people, we can just make fun of different groups of people. But I think really what was happening, because I know we have theme parties too, we'll do things that are offensive, like CEOs and office hoes, like implying that I always feel like what we do, it's the men can just dress normally, but the girls have to dress slutty. But uh, anyways, <laughs> I feel like with this, it just sort of makes it seem like we feel like it's okay to make fun of groups of people and to dress up like them and mock them, but obviously that's not how everyone is. And I think for them, they just thought like, hey, we're going to have a Mexican night, the same way that sometimes we have fiesta parties and everyone eats tacos and te drinks tequila and brings sombreros. I think they just took it too far.
Um, well, first of all, I don't think it did anything because if you ask a Kyogre, like we know a lot of Kyogres, uh, they're happier now actually because they don't have to pay the same dues that we have to pay. They just go by a different name and they don't go through normal recruitment. But uh, So I really think if they're trying to punish them, they didn't do that well because it didn't work. But um, I also don't think it was a good way about going... like. I don't know, a lot of, like, a frat did the same Mexican theme this year, and they didn't get in trouble for it, so I think it's like, they should have gotten warned, or they should have been asked, I think they did speak out to the public and say, like, we're so sorry that we did this, we didn't mean to be insensitive, we didn't mean to be rude, but I don't, I don't think the girls learned anything from it. I think they're just like, oh, we're not a real sorority anymore. <laughs> I don't think it helped. <laughs> With regards to Penn State's view on the controversy, officials stated it was within the sorority's First Amendment rights to express themselves in this manner. Thus, they decided not to take any disciplinary actions against the sorority itself. The First Amendment guarantees the right to free speech. However, it does not guarantee the right to free speech without consequences. Anything you say and do can have a negative repercussion associated with it. Even though the sorority was exercising their right to free speech, should Penn State have levied disciplinary actions against such offensive content? Despite the university's lack of action against the sorority, small posters like this are displayed around campus as a reminder to keep costumes and parties not offensive, especially around times such as Halloween. Today, the university and general public must use this controversy as a learning experience. One must question if we should increase our sensitivity and be more careful about not offending other people. Or perhaps the reverse could be argued. Should people become less sensitive when others joke or make generalizations about identity, be that race, height, language, or even culture? While this controversy does not answer these questions in whole, it brings a new platform for which debate still continues.